Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. What are the odds that something will fail? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about system reliability, or what are the odds that something will work, or not. A system is a collection of components designed to do something. You don't have to know a lot about probability for this lesson because I'm going to break it down into simple, practical terms and use practical examples throughout. You know I like rockets. A multi-stage rocket is a good practical example of a series system. In order for a rocket to do its job, each stage must work properly. If the first or the second stage fails, then the mission fails. So, let's put up some numbers on this. Let's use, say, 90% for all of our examples to make it convenient. If each stage has a reliability of 90% or 0.9, then what's the overall chance that the mission will be a success? Well, we'll draw our components in series like this, and we'll give each of them a 0.9. And then for a simple series system, we simply multiply the probabilities to get 81%. Whoa, look at that. The system is less reliable than each of its components overall. So if we had a third stage in series with the same reliabilities, we would multiply it as well and end up with only 73%. Ouch, that's, that's not very good for something like a rocket. So if we use something that's, say, 99% reliable at each component, then the system reliability doesn't trail off quite as fast. If we use something that's 75% reliable, you can see that it's 56% for 2, or 42% uh, for 3. So to improve the reliability of a series system, we need to improve the reliability of each of its components. Remember that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Series is unavoidable in many cases, but what's the alternative? Parallel. For those of you that have had circuits, the analysis of these systems will feel familiar. So let's just jump on in, or out in this case. Skydiving. Why do skydivers carry one more parachute than they intend to use? Well, because it's safer, right? But why, and how much safer? Well, let's use a simple example and find out. So we have a system of two parachutes. There's a main and a reserve. You can only use one at a time, and if the main chute fails, you have a reserve. They're always used in that sequence. The main is attempted first, and then the reserve. So this diagram here shows the two parachutes. Now, even though they're used in series, this is a parallel system. For a parallel system, both of the items have to fail before you die. So let's use our standard reliabilities of 90% for now, and let's do the math on this. We have to analyze this system a bit differently, but it'll feel familiar to you circuits people. Instead of reliabilities for parallel systems, we have to think in terms of inverse reliabilities or failure rates. Because for par parallel systems, that's how you have to do it, and it'll make sense here in just a second. So for each of our parachutes, we use the inverse of our reliabilities, which is uh, 0.1. Now, just like resistors in series, we're going to multiply those, well, similar, we're not, we're not adding inverses. We're multiplying now, and so when you multiply 0.1 times 0.1, you get 0.01, a failure rate, which means that our reliability is 99%, which is still not great uh, in terms of skydiving. But realistically, two parachutes don't have the same reliability rates, do they? The reserve is designed and packed to be more reliable, and it's subject to more regulations than the main. So let's stray from our nice example here for just a minute, and let's say that the main has, so we're saying we're 9.8 and 0.998, which correlates to 0 0.02 and 0 0.002. So when you multiply all these out, you get a 98% chance of success, 0.998, which means it's a failure rate of 0 0.02, and 0 0.002, you multiply this out, and you basically get a 1 in 25,000 chance of failure, which might actually be a realistic number. I don't know. But I'm sure someone has actual data on this. But parallel is good. It provides a backup. But what about parallel systems and components? Well, let's look at this example. Here, we have a series system on top and a series system on bottom. These are then in parallel. So we have a backup system for the first system. This is called high level or system level redundancy. But you know what? Just like in golf, low is the way to go. Low level or component level redundancy is actually better. 
So let's draw one of those systems and show why. Here I have components A1 and A2 in parallel. Then they are in series with parallel components B1 and B2. This is component level redundancy, and if you can afford it, it's better than high level redundancy, and here's why. Let's go back up to the high level system. Consider what happens if component B1 fails. The, this system is now B2 can't perform its backup function and is now just dead weight, even though it's still good. If we look at the low level system, and if component B1 fails, B2 can still perform its backup function, and everything's good. In fact, in this case, A2 could fail, and we're still good, because now the information or data just flows this way. This is why low-level redundancy is preferred. It offers more paths to success, but it costs a lot, and it can weigh a lot, too. So now let's analyze an arbitrary system and show how all this works out. We'll use 90% for each of our cases. So if we start with three systems in parallel here on the left, two components on the top, two components on the top two and only one on the bottom, then it flows into this system here with a series system in parallel with a single component. Lastly, this all flows through a single component. We have to simplify this system by taking each series part and combining it. So here you see I've multiplied the point nines together in each series branch and got the point eight ones. Yes, it's less reliable in each branch because it's in series. Remember the chain analogy? So now let me take this system and combine the parallel portions. For parallel, remember, I have to take the inverse reliabilities or failure rates of each before I multiply them. So we take 1 minus the reliabilities to get the failure rates of 0.19s and the 0.1s. Now we can multiply each of the parallel branches together. So all of these three and these two for 0 0.00361, 0 0.019, and still just the 0.9. Now we have inverse reliabilities or failure rates on each branch, so we need to flip them back around by taking one minus all this, and we get this. We now have three component series systems, so we just multiply it all together to get the overall system reliability of 87.97%. Now let's look at the original system. Which component is the most critical? Right, this one. Everything has to flow through it. And overall, it's the weakest link because it's all by itself. Obviously, we should do what we can to either back it up or to make it more reliable than it is now because it's the weakest link. Now, if you have systems that branch into multiple components or receive signals from multiple components, then it gets more complicated, but Google knows how to do that. But I may have a video on that someday. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Board will not come clean. Time to get off the spray. <laughs>